Have you ever wanted to know what your fuel pressure was at any gosh darn given second of the day? Well, you're answering yes because you're here. Or you just made this video confused, disoriented. Either way, enjoy. Because I've basically got the IQ of a mango, I'm predicting you said yes to that question. Today we're working on our 1963 Buick Riviera with an LS swap. <laughs> or Junkyard 5.3 liter that I swapped an LS6 intake on it to make it look more slutty. Might be that. It is. The whole reason that I'm wanting to install a fuel pressure gauge in here is because I'm having some drivability issues and some hot start issues. First, I thought this was an issue in my tune, and since I tuned it myself, well, there clearly can't be any problems there. No, that, that's, not, that's not the issue. It was tuned about two years ago. These issues popped up six months ago. Tunes don't really get off tune unless there is something either mechanically failing or some other part that's either wasn't right when I was tuning it and it's changed or vice versa. So to test our hypothesis of a faulty fuel pressure regulator, we're gonna be installing this Marshall fuel pressure gauge. I'm partial to the Marshall fuel pressure regulator because it's black and white and just happens to look really nice with the engine bay. Also, they don't like to let their liquid goo out and then all over whatever they decide to leak on. Thanks, Jegs. Not to throw Jegs under the bus because a lot of their house brand stuff is decent price and decent quality, but I've not had good luck with them. Credit where credit is due. When they do fail, then they will. They keep working. They still, they're just bouncier a little bit, so. Tasks failed successfully. But Daddy Matt, this is probably what you're thinking to yourself right now, I don't have an aftermarket fuel rail. How am I supposed to check fuel pressure? Well, you can go to O'Reilly's and just rent one of their little fuel pressure gauges and plug it into your trigger valve. Or if you want to be really slick, this is made by fuel injection. No, none of, none of those words are in, well, one of them is Performance Fuel Systems Inc. They make this little guy. It threads on the aerator valve and pushes the little valve at the same time. You can keep this in your glove box and swap it around to your full fleet of problematic vehicles, because if you're anything like me, it's a fleet. Or you can just leave it installed 24 seven, but if you ever did need to pull it off, well, you don't have to reinstall your Schrader valve. So stay tuned because we're gonna be installing this on one of our other project vehicles around here and testing her out. Looks like we got a case of tumbly wumblies. Or in normal words, when I pulled the fuel line off, I expected there to be fuel inside the fuel line. <laughs> I know crazy weird stuff but i mean if i shake the line a couple times i can get a drip to come out but just like my uncle used to say you shake it more than twice you're playing with it son not really sure why he said that to me at my birthday but doesn't matter it works in this instance with this adapter fitting our installation is pretty straightforward just slam it in any connection point and just start it in there remember to clock the dial of your fuel pressure gauge so it reads easily and wherever your needle sits most of the time that the air bubble isn't in that space because if it sits in the air bubble well there's really no point for it being fluid filled because your needle might bounce around a little bit it's time to do some testing and i already ran into a snag when i turn the key and try to run around the door and look under here it's already at 20 psi and falling so that tells me we have a massive fuel injection leak up here totally possible or we've got a blown out diaphragm on a regulator back there. So now let's try firing up the engine and see if we get any fuel pressure. 60 PSI is exactly what you want to see on an LS engine. I'd be fine though, anything between 56 and 65. As long as it's consistent in there and doesn't wander around between that range, doesn't really matter. Your tuner should be able to well, tune it and be eh, short term, long term fuel trims could probably figure that out over time. I basically have to change these things out like yearly maintenance to keep them from blowing out my rear end or in this case, my diaphragm. Based on all my LS swap experience, I think we have a faulty fuel pressure regulator. And I'm not even surprised. Anytime you run a Walbro 255 or even this MSD pump behind a factory fuel pressure regulator, and you wonder why they blow out, running like three or four times as much fuel as they would normally. Now, of course, there's a ton of different symptoms you can have when you have a faulty fuel pressure regulator besides just a poor running engine. But one of the biggest signs on an LS engine, whether you have a C5 Corvette style fuel regulator like this that mounts underneath the car, or you have the truck style that actually mounts on the intake on the rail, is it doesn't like to warm start. Oh, that's, that's the difference between your 20s and your 30s. Figuring out which knee is gonna be the bad knee. I think I'm having issues with my erectile, my hardness, fuel pressure hardness. Can't get it up.